When you meditate, it's like building a home for the mind. And whenever you build a home, you have to do the groundwork. Here our groundwork is thinking about the breath and observing the breath. So take a couple of good long, deep in and out breaths. Notice where you feel the breathing process in the body. Because when we talk about breath here, it's not so much the air coming in and out of the lungs, it's the flow of energy in the body. The rise and fall of the abdomen, the expansion and contraction of the rib cage. Sometimes your shoulders get involved, sometimes other parts of the body get involved. And as you get more and more sensitive to the breathing process in the body, you begin to realize that the entire nervous system is involved, all the way down to the tips of the fingers and the tips of your toes. But in the beginning, focus on the areas that are most obvious to you, and try to find a rhythm of breathing that feels good. This double process of paying attention to the breath and then evaluating how it's going. The technical terms for that are directed thought and evaluation. Directed thought is you focus your mind in a particular direction and then keep reminding yourself to stay here. Because the nature of the mind is it doesn't take too many directions, or it doesn't listen to directions well. You tell it to think about one thing, it'll think about something else. In fact, the more you tell it not to think about something, the more it's going to think about it. So you've got to curb that tendency. And so it's good to remind yourself of why it's good to be here. It's because your intentions are happening here. Your intentions are what determine what you're going to do and say and think. And you want to be very clear about those intentions. And they're not being taken over by unskillful mind states, and that they actually are in the interests of your true welfare and happiness and the true welfare and happiness of others. So we need to be here to watch these things. All too often we put our intentions on automatic pilot and go running off. It's like telling your workers to clear some land and then you run away, go off and have a good time. And sometimes they'll do a good job, and sometimes they won't. But to make sure they do a good job, you've got to be here, watching over them. And the breath is the best way to guarantee that you're going to be here in the present moment, because there is no future breath you can watch and no past breath you can watch. You've got the breath right here, right now. So it keeps you anchored. So keep reminding yourself, this is a good place to stay. Stay right here with the breath, even if nothing is happening quite yet. It's not going to happen until you've been here for a while and settled in. That's the directed thought. Evaluation is when you notice how well it's going. It's the breath, the kind of breath that it's easy to stay with. Would it be better if it were longer or shorter, deeper, more shallow, heavier, lighter, faster, slower? Experiment for a while to see what kind of breathing feels good. And you can also evaluate your perception of the breath. If you think of it having to come through those two little holes in your nostrils, there tend to, tends to be a fair amount of pressure pulling the breath in, pushing it out. So hold a different perception in mind. Think of the breath coming in and out through every pore of the body. The body's like a big sponge. Lots of holes where the breath energy can enter and, and leave. And try to notice as you breathe in, are there any parts of the body where there's extra tension, unnecessary tension? If you see something tensing up as you breathe in or tensing up as you breathe out, see if you can relax it so that no new tension builds up as you breathe in. You don't hold on to any tension as you breathe out. And just keep doing this. Evaluation and together with directed thought here are the discernment factors of concentration practice. The Buddha identifies them with a high level of what he calls right resolve. In ordinary right resolve, you resolve not to indulge in 
thoughts of sensual pleasures, not to indulge in thoughts of ill will, not to indulge in thoughts of harmfulness. And then as the mind begins to settle down, that level of right resolve turns into the directed thought and evaluation of concentration. Because you realize you could be thinking thoughts of renunciation, goodwill, compassion. And there wouldn't be any harm in that aside from the fact that it tires the mind. And when the mind is tired, it can start doing things you don't want it to do. It starts getting sloppy. So the mind needs to rest. So the Buddha said this is how you bring the mind to a higher level of right resolve. You direct your thoughts to the breath. You evaluate the breath for the purpose of settling down. So do the groundwork well. Clear away all the stumps. Clear away all the ants' nests and other things that might make it difficult for you to build a good solid house here. Now there comes a point where the mind has settled down to the the extent that you don't need to do all the evaluation anymore, and even your directed thought is not so necessary because you are more and more at one with the breath. And it feels better, because what you're trying to do is give rise to a sense of ease and rapture. Because that's what enables the mind to stay here. It really does give you a sense that you are at home here. If the breath feels uncomfortable, you're going to want to go away someplace else. It's like having a, a house that's not very well built, no really good place to lie down. You're going to go f looking for your entertainment and your pleasure someplace else. So clean the area. Figure out what kind of breathing would give rise to a sense of pleasure. What kind of breathing gives rise to a sense of refreshment? Or in and John Lee's terminology, fullness. One technique you might try is think of your hands right now, and think of every muscle in the hand relaxing, all the tendons, everything's very relaxed. And see if you can hold that sense of relaxation in, in the hands as you breathe in, as you breathe out, so the in-breath and the out-breath don't harm that sense of fullness. And as the hand is relaxed, they will feel more and more full. The energy there is full, then you allow that energy to spread up the arms, down the spine, up into the head, in all directions. And it will be accompanied by a sense of lightness, a sense of sufficiency. You're right here and you have all enough to feel good about being in the body. And that's what enables you to stay here long enough so you can actually watch the mind and begin to see where an intention begins to gather itself. Because it's not the case that you won't have distracting thoughts while you do this. They'll come. This is where directed thought has to keep reminding you that that's not where you go. It's like standing on the side of the road and somebody driving past, and you just watch them, watch them, watch them. Well, you don't have to watch them. They can drive past, you see them, but you don't have to follow them down the road. You've got other work to do right here. So you keep directing your thought back to the breath, back to the breath. Now at first you find that you've been kidnapped by those thoughts time and again. But after all, you begin to gain a sense of when the thought is beginning to gather. There's a little stirring in the, someplace in the body. And the mind will slap a label on it, saying, oh, this is a thought about this, or that's a thought about that, and then it goes running with it. Well, if you can catch it before the label gets slapped on, you see, this is just a little stirring of tension in the breath energy field in the body. And if you can breathe through it, think of it combing out tangles in the energy then the thought won't form, and you've learned an important lesson that helps you think the thoughts you want to think and learn how to ignore the thoughts you don't. 
that gives you more control over your intentions. Something comes up in the mind and you're in a position to watch it. And not only to watch it, but also have a sense of satisfaction with being in the breath that makes you less inclined to, go to want to go with anything that's unskillful. This changes the balance of power in the mind. You're more in control. Because the mind is well fed here in its home, and well rested. But to have that sense of being rested requires some work. As I said, it's the groundwork so you can build a good house. Or if your concentration isn't a house yet, well, think of it as clearing the ground so you can put a tent up. And there will be sticks and stones and other things sticking through the tent and making it hard to lie down. So if you found that you've lost the breath, you just come right back. Direct your thoughts back to the breath. Direct them back to the breath. And each time you come back, reward yourself with a breath that feels especially good. What would feel really gratifying right now in terms of the breath energy in the body? Sometimes all you have to do is pose that question in the mind and the body will respond. And how can you maintain that sense of feeling gratified as you breathe in and out again? And not only with the in-breath and the out-breath, but also between the breaths. So the whole breath cycle feels light, full, spacious, at ease, perfectly balanced. That's when you've got good shelter for the mind. So lay the groundwork well, clear things out. So the mind can have a sense of being at home here. And once it's at home, then it can really do the important work of learning how to gain some control inside the mind, this factor of your life that shapes everything you experience. So it's in a position where it can shape things well.